guys, welcome back to Beyond Seclusion. Um, I had a late night teaching, and this morning I got, I got up to do chores and stuff, and we've had a double murder here at Beyond Seclusion. So those of you that have fowl, you're gonna run in to this problem. So let's take a look and, and see what we got here. So these are our pins. Here's uh, one of the chicken pens, and unfortunately, this is what I discovered this morning, my beloved chickens. Um, that is a possum, okay? A fox, a fox would have killed a whole lot more chickens. Uh, bobcat, coyote, they're gonna take the chicken and run. They're smart, they're not gonna sit here and eat it in a pen. A possum's about the only thing that's dumb enough that would just sit here in the pen and eat it. So I guarantee you we're going to catch him tonight. We're going to have to do a little fix in here on the pens. I'm going to turn this around. These pens have worked great. This is a small gap, and this is big enough for that possum to fit through. It's going to keep out coyotes and bobcats, and we've had these guys in here for a long time. All I'm going to do is I'm going to just take some wire and extend it across here and we'll fix that problem. But what we're going to do is we're going to get a trap. And if you've got a different kind of coop, I'm going to show you a great way of catching these guys. And over here with my smaller ones, as you can see, I've got chicken wire all the way around. But that means that this door doesn't open. And so we're going to keep those guys in there. Now, if you have a more traditional coop like this, this is something... I came up with that worked great until we quit using this. What I did is I built a trap into the coop. And then it sits in there. And you can see the traps in there. We've caught a lot of bobcat using this because when we shut it up at night, they can see, smell, and hear the chickens and they can't help themselves. They just come in there and you got them and you pull it out. But our chickens aren't cooping in here anymore. And this is an old one. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull my cage out and I'm gonna put those dead chickens in this and put it over uh, by the coop and we're gonna get that possum. We take it out. I'm telling you, if you've got an outdoor coop that's big enough, this is the way to get predators. You just set this trap every night and you're gonna get your predators long before they get your chickens. Okay, this isn't quite as good as my other one. I've got the chicken back there. I'm setting this out during the day so that I can attempt to catch cats and condition them not to go in the cage and not to eat chickens. We've got lots of cats. We don't ever have any problems with them, but they might be tempted to do that. And I just don't want them going in there at night and being stuck in there when I'm trying to catch an actual predator. So we'll leave this out today and see if we get some cats. And then uh, I guarantee you, we're gonna have that possum in there tonight. Well, it's morning, and we got a possum. It's not quite the massive, huge one that I thought. Uh, very likely could be our chicken killer. Anyway, if you've got chickens and you've got a coop, you have got to construct that trap that I showed you. It works. It's awesome. We have saved tons of fowl since we made that. In fact, I got to figure out how to build one in to the barn here. Anyway, thanks for joining. I hope this is helpful. Uh, if you like, please give a like and comments. If you've got products you'd like us to test, get a hold of us. Thanks for watching. Until next time. A quick note. The, one of the beauties about this is for you tender-hearted people, you're using a live trap. So if you've got cats or dogs, you don't have to worry about injuring them. Uh, they're usually not gonna go in the trap more than once and then they won't go. And then you'll quickly condition them not to do that. 
Now here's something to think about, at least in Nebraska, it is actually against the law to move a trapped animal more than 100 yards from where you caught it. So take a look at this picture of what we caught one night. So as you can imagine, moving him 100 yards, actually it was her, moving her 100 yards wasn't going to solve any kind of problem whatsoever. So I called Game and Parks and they informed me that I can't take it anywhere and release it. Bobcats are awesome. I, I love bobcats. I don't want to shoot a bobcat in a cage. So, you know, I'm asking Game and Parks, why can't I take it and release it somewhere? And they told me something that I hadn't thought of, and I doubt you had thought of it either, is this bobcat ate four ducks and six chickens. If I drive it, you know, two miles away or 20 miles away, and I let it go, and I let it go next to anybody that has fowl, I'm dumping my problem in their backyard and it's already got the taste for fowl and now it's gonna eat their chicken. So if you're tender hearted, um, find somebody that's not. If you've got an animal that's eating your fowl, um, you either need to find a really remote place or you need to euthanize it. So anyway, I guarantee you this, this system is awesome. It works, if I could patent it, I would. Good luck and keep your chickens and fowl safe. Mm -hmm.